indeed. We are live. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are talking about Dragon Bane, specifically how we're looking at running it at Gen Con. Uh, this is aimed specifically for the uh, for the GMs that are going to be running it at Origins and Gen Con uh, for for uh, Free League uh, through our gaming group. Uh, we're going to just discuss some generalities today. We're not going to get into specifics of rules or anything like that. This is just we're just going to kind of lay out like some ground rules uh, for for running the games at the con, uh, mostly because we really haven't had a serious in depth look at the new final version that I just uh, sent to you guys yesterday. Um, so. Um, First off, let's talk about it. Uh, Dragon Bane. What is Dragon Bane? Dragon Bane is a new game, but it is an old game too. Oh, and I want to thank him. Sorry, James, for for jumping in here with me. He's run a few sessions of, of uh, Dragon Bane. Um, uh, Jonathan should be joining us shortly. I know he was tied up in another meeting. I don't hope he when when I see him, I'll just plug him in. Um, he's a busy, busy man. Uh, you know, something about being vice president or Louisville or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's a nerd. Yeah, he's one of those nerds. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for for joining in here with us, James. A uh, good friend of mine. Uh, he jumped right in the boat with uh, Dragon Bane. How have you how have you enjoyed running it so far? You haven't run the final version, but you've run the, the the betas. Oh, I love the betas. So I did the um the Ridden Mount adventure, mm -hmm. which is you know the starter adventure that they give you with the starter kit. Yeah. And uh, it was a TPK. Um, TPK. <laughs> there, there was two things in my favor to make it a TPK, and it was an enjoyable TPK, let me tell you. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, one, uh, the game's more brutal than it looks at first. All right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and yes. and once, once that came out, it was interesting. The other thing is that my four players delightful people each and every one have been successful in life and everything else but apparently they they take their brain out of their head and put it on a hook somewhere when they go to game and they they tell me this when they sat down we're the worst players ever watch us go <laughs> and i did one nice. by one <laughs> nice <laughs> but nice. um you know and so that that it that ended um and uh, it was an it, it was an all day affair. It was a special occasion going on, and we we broke basically for dinner after after this TPK. And then they turned to me and go, "Do you got another adventure?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> so I went into the adventures and I got to run the um the Purple Temple or the Temple of Purple Temple of or... Purple Flame. Yeah, yeah, Temple of Purple Flame, and um. Still four players. Same We're down four? to 75%. <laughs> because one of them, by this time, pushed everything and managed to... F he went through the portal and managed to fail every single will save. <laughs> he is now a permanent fixture in hell. Nice. Not my nice. words. It's the modules. <laughs> it's here in the module. It's here. Same thing I say when uh, when I just completely gank someone in Twilight 2K, another great free league game. When I shoot somebody and do a critical right to their heart. It's it's right here in the in a critical hit table. It's, right <laughs> yeah. you're, it's you're not me. Dead. It's the game. The I game killed I didn't, you. I didn't. It's I didn't, the game. I, yeah. <laughs> so lead. So freely, yeah. They're they're really. Oh, am I ball. smiling? I don't know why I'm smiling. It's a nervous tick. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just like I put on the t-shirts, if I'm giggling, it is already too late. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Now, there's a t-shirt lurking fears needs. <laughs> well, it's, it is. Lurking it's fears. Lurking. If I'm giggling, it's too late. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, it is lurking fears GMT number one, I believe. Oh, cool. On, on the Teespring site. Uh, so yeah, but, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I canceled my there. order because they pushed it back to the end of April. Oh my goodness! Oh well, maybe maybe they'll get back with you on it. Yeah, I don't know. three months is a little bit too long for two T-shirts. 
I, I hear you. I ordered I ordered one just the other day. I don't think I'm going to get it in time for Chaos and Con, but that's okay. Hopefully, it gets here in time for Origins. But, <laughs> but um, I'm not even sure I was going to get that. <laughs> well, anyway, we're not here to talk about uh, oh, yeah, Legends of right. Seas. Um, so <laughs> we're here. Yeah, we're here to talk about Dragon Bane. Again, yeah, the, the game is deceptively lethal. Um, very deceptively lethal. You look at it, and they look like you know characters from that would maybe be like a second or third level equivalent in D D, especially D D five e. They've got some hit points, you know. Uh, they got a bunch of skills. Their their abilities are pretty good. Um, but <laughs> when they go to mix it up, man, there is no holds barred. You know, uh, the first thing we realized right off the bat is bad guys always hit you don't roll <laughs> you know when i first saw that i was like let, 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 let me clarify that bad guys always hit the gm doesn't roll the <laughs> yeah. player rolls to either yeah. evade dodge or parry yeah but if they do that they it lose take, their action it takes an action yeah and if they've already acted then they can't right yeah, yeah. so now it becomes very focused on action economy indeed indeed good good point a excellent point but yeah and then and there's like a table of different actions your bad guy can do uh some of them it could be just scared the crap of them could be could be in one of the one i drop a boulder on you you're dead <laughs> you know it just it just depends um uh they're 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 very lethal uh thank goodness that armor soaks up damage in this it kind of gives people a chance to 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 uh, not get one shot, one killed because it can totally happen. Otherwise, uh, may just definitely want to stay in the back, <laughs> you know, uh, in this game. Um, again, very very lethal game, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the rules and stuff and the whys and wherefores yet until we again talk uh, go over the final uh, setup again. Basically, kind of want to talk about how we're going to do it at Gen Con. Um, so Gen Free League has set us up with a room uh, to run these games in. Uh, I am assuming it's going to be in that set of rooms that are right across from Exhibit Hall. So that's nice. Um, hopefully in between games, you can duck in there and, and, and look around and stuff and see what's going on. Um, they're going to have room for us to run nine tables, uh, three, three slots a day, uh, nine tables starting Technically Thursday. Some of us will be there running some games on Wednesday, probably in another area. But Thursday on uh, at the convention, uh, we will be in the International Convention Center running games. Um, uh, seven. I mean, yeah, yeah, we'll be running games at 9 a.m., 2 p.m., 7 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then we'll have one Sunday 10 a.m. slot. Uh, set up so I kind of set up that slot because like you know some people might want to get together with some friends very nice and you know and not not want to and also gives you time to you know pack up and get stuff you know ready to go back home you know and get get stuff out of your hotel room so 10 a.m is a good we're, we're going to do one more you know like our our, our encore kind of a uh, thing for Sunday uh, again there's there are going to be nine tables set up for us I have every single table full so if you're coming and asking for me to run a game, you're not going to run it in there. You can run it in probably in our free league room, and I mean in, in our lurking fears room. But uh, that table, th that room is completely full. Uh, now the, the free league people have got some special permission from the con to be able to have a second point of sale in that room, so they will be in that room there as well uh, with their with their tables full of wares. Uh, so hopefully. Uh, that will really work out for them to have, you know, a, a, a booth in the exhibit hall and be selling, be able to sell games there in the room. Uh, so that'll be really handy. Um, we do believe you'll have everything you'll need to run the game, like, um, like specifically, like you know, like GM screens, probably like some starter boxes that's going to have a lot of the stuff in it uh, that you can use uh, for the game uh, for for for. Um, for, for specifically for Dragon Bane, um, that's going to be nice to be able to have. Uh, I, do, I don't think these will be for you to keep, but I will have enough for everybody to be able to run, uh, uh, run, run at that table and then like put it back in a box. 
Um, let's see, what else am I thinking of? Oh, um, um, as far as setting up and getting ready for the game, uh, GMs, I'd like for you to be there about 15 minutes early, you know, to set up and have everything ready for the for the table. We'll go over probably more specifically what we'd like to have at the table waiting for them when they come in at another time. But, you know, get there, you know, get there 15 minutes. For you, the GM, 15 minutes early is on time for you, I feel. <laughs> to get there, make sure that everybody's got their stuff off the table from the game before you. <laughs> you know, reset the chairs if you got to. Uh, set out your character sheets. Get things ready to go. Uh, you know, set up your, your electronics, whatever you need to get going. Uh, welcome the players as they come in. Um, as, as a general rule, if your table is not full, uh, by the time the game's ready to start, I always give like about five minutes. Somebody may be coming late from another game, got held up in a line to get a drink. You know, you never know. Uh, always give like five minutes later. If you got a full table and it's time, go. By all means, go. Um, uh, but hey, give them like a five minute window or something like that or maybe they'll be nice enough to to text one of their buddies i'm on on my way and you know and allow them have a chance to jump in um any anything else you're thinking of that i'm not thinking of as far as setup goes james so, james has been doing the con stuff as long as i have not longer so yeah uh, thank you. I'm I'm feeling <laughs> fine today. My medication's kicking in. <laughs> nice. Um, the only thing is, is I don't know what free league's doing. As um, far as so, in other words, how they're running the room. Okay. Now, um, lurking fears. If it doesn't have drinks on hand, usually has drinks nearby. Mm -hmm. We 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 know that. Where this room is, where 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 is the 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 uh, the free league room? I'm I'm anticipating it. It's not set in stone, but I'm anticipating it to be in that great hall, uh, right right across from the exhibit hall. There's like the a whole set of like game rooms that are that are right across from the exhibit hall. So if you got multiple games at free league, look at your map, mark the bathrooms, <laughs> make sure you bring some hydration. Yeah, because what's our job? Run our mouths and lie to people until they think they're in a fantasy immersion. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And some of you are running multiple sessions through the day, so yeah, you're gonna get, you're gonna wear out your voice. I'm hoping the tables will be spaced out enough, like they have been here in the past few cons, uh, especially you know post COVID, uh, so that noises aren't jumping over top of each other. Uh, hopefully, you're not sitting at a table beside me or James because we're both. Horrifically loud, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but you can think of it as a challenge or a training exercise to get you up to our level. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, exactly. Uh, take take it on as a challenge, absolutely. Um, let's see what else am I dis discussing out here? Oh yes, um, uh, yeah, good uh, good idea about the drinks. Uh, there may be, uh, uh, you know, a uh, some some kind of canister or something for water they may not be bring bring something the first day and then have a look around you know uh, usually there's there's fountains and stuff like that to refill and all that good stuff uh so that that's that's you know around in the con uh there are plenty of places to go eat and drink close to the con uh the uh, the food truck place is really really handy um to be able to get stuff in and out uh i did try to schedule everyone who is running uh, games both for Free League and for other publishers to like put your Free League games all on the same day so that you aren't running back and forth between the Free League room and then the Lurking Fears room. I know it sounds confusing, but I have no idea where the Lurking Fears room is going to be either. It could be on the complete other end of the con. Um, so I'd want to make sure, you know, if you're running Lurking Fears games like Call of Cthulhu or Traveler or what have you, and you want to run it in the Lurking Fears room, you can you can be in that area and plan your day around being in that area. And if you're running uh, free league games like Dragon Bane, Electric uh, uh, Blade Runner, all that other fun stuff, uh, you'll be that you'll be in the free league room and be and can concentrate your day around that area. Uh, so try to make that easy for the GMs on that. 
Um, now there is a lot in the adventure book to run. I particularly like how it's set up. I think I mentioned this in the in the uh, in the free league chat Facebook chat. If you're not on the free league Facebook chat and you want to be, give me a holler. Um, but I specifically like how it's set up, kind of keep on a Borderlands style. When I first read through it, you know, even the beta version, I'm like, oh, this is this is keep on a Borderlands. And again, it harkens back to where Dragon Bane is actually a 40 year old game. It's just been played, <laughs> you know, in Norway or Sweden. <laughs> you know, uh, it's been it's it's been it's been their D and D, um, and it's just you know they've re revamped it, retouched it, and and give it some 5e uh, uh, bent. Um, but still has a really great old school feel. But yeah, it definitely has a keep on the Borderlands feel that where there is a, a village or something on the frontier called Outskirt with a spattering of people for them to run into, some NPCs, some shopkeepers and stuff like that, a history in the town. Uh, and then, hey, there's all this stuff going on and you can show them the whole map if you want, you know, uh, show them the map and say, you know, hey, here's places to go. Uh, so, yeah, uh, when you first start out, this is how I plan to do it, Broadstroke. And it may change before I get to Gen Con. I may see uh, how this works with some people at Origins and, uh, and, and, and go with it from there. But my first plan is to do the very beginning of the adventures where they meet, where they meet the guy with the note or, or, or has the message and the item um, in the little gorge or what have you. I have a really brief encounter. Uh, I have every intention yeah. of doing that in passing. In other words, you met this person and this is what went down so that they have the background. But I don't want to take it from actual game time because a lot of people are going to be caught off guard with the lethality and the action economy. And that's going to slow it down as they figure out what to do. Gotcha. I mean, those of us who have been running it with a group for a while, yeah, it's sped up. It, it, go right back to your first game. It's going to be slow again. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's different ways to go around. And I, I want to uh, want to stress to the players that I don't really feel that there is a wrong way to approach the people on this. Uh, as long as you, everybody is playing by the same final rules um, uh, and, and all that, and all that good stuff. Um, as long as, as long as everybody's playing by the same rules, I would, you know, I would, if you, you have the initiative cards, use the initiative cards. Um, you can, you, you can definitely use the, you know, get, get all that kind of stuff going on. Um, but as far as like, should everybody run the same adventure? Should we run it the same way? Absolutely not. Nobody, no game is going to go with the same. What, again, what I plan to do is to have the little encounter there, maybe let them scrap with those goblins or whatever. If they're, if they, you know, if, if they are to kind of give them like a, a quick win, quick win, easy win. I want to wrap all that up in an hour, get them in outskirt, you know, uh, and, and have them be bopping around in, in the town. And then, you know, getting the idea of what they can do, what their possibilities are. Um, and then from there, I would do one of those adventures. Like I would do Ritter Mount or I would do Temple of the Purple Flame or just look at doing one of them. Present them with a couple options that you are ready to do. Don't lay out the whole map and go pick anything. But steer them towards one or two areas. You know, have the girl at the bar or whatever say hey i can use your help over here you know uh the person at the good shop goes hey you know i've heard some people getting some good treasure out of blah 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 bathiel's load you know stuff like that um so you know you can you can steer them towards one or two adventures so kind of have be ready to do one or two of them you know and and, and play that and then let them know hey this is how it went everybody's having having a good time uh, you can get this stuff, you know, <laughs> right over there and be able to play out the rest of them to your heart's content. You know, there's all these other ones that they can play in or make up their own. Um, 
uh so yeah um i'm messaging jonathan so if there's anything else you need to add, you want to add on that as far as like where, where to go or what to do not really because um if the only thing i i can really say is if you're planning on going to both origins and gen con yeah is pay attention to how it goes down at origins because that that's yeah. that's your true first contact with convention players and you know if, if you've run at conventions before you know no table is the same nope and uh it's it's different play styles some of them are going to clash some won't mm -hmm. that that's not the focus of this but it'll get you to get your timings and what you do get your timings and how to guide down pat 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah like i mean i could just tell all the gms hey we're all running ritter mount that's all we're running ritter mount then that's it blah 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 and actually as it's set up in the adventure they're uh, it's set up on gen con they're all called ritter mount because i had to name it something three months ago <laughs> when i set up the schedule <laughs> When I set up a schedule, and so I'm like, you know what, Ritter Mount, Ritter Mount, because I can't say Dragon Bane. Gen Con doesn't like it when you tell the tale, the, tell the title of the uh, game in the in the heading and the title. Um, so I'm like, Ritter Mount, it is. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I went with. I would have personally went with an adventure in Misty Vale. Misty Vale, exactly. Yeah, should have something like that. Yeah, that. that so that way, mind. nobody knows what they're getting. Exactly. Um, including the champ. <laughs> true enough. True enough. Uh, yeah, they're they're all they're all in the in the uh, Gen Con thing listed as Ritter Mount, uh, but by me by no means feel hemmed in to like everyone has to run Ritter Mount. You, we could we could everybody could run Ritter Mount. None of them are going to play the same. You know, we we got like forty something games of Ritter Mount to come and plan for that week. None of them are going to be the same, even if we did. Uh, so why not show the diversity of the different adventures in the book and, and allow them some choice? Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think starting off real quick, you know, give them, I, uh, I'm also going to print off like the very first little like script out of the main book, the thing it's in italics that kind of gives like the very, very brief history of Dragon Bane to kind of give them the setting and either set it out on the tape. I would probably just set it on the table, let the people read it as they come in, uh, uh, rather than read the whole line of block text and bore the players to half to death. Have it set out on the table, something you know, big enough print, easy for them to be able to you know look over and read. And go, okay, that's kind of where we're at. You know, uh, that's that's how how it is. That way, you don't have to give a whole lot of time, devote a whole lot of time to world building for these GMs at a, I mean, for these players at a convention one shot kind of a deal. Uh, you know, it's it's there. They can look at it and say, oh, yeah, this Misty Vale area was taken over by demons a long time ago and the dragons beat them back, blah, 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 blah. You know, OK, now now I know what kind of world we're in, you know, and it's, you know, that's that's where we're at. Um, you know, there's a very little bit of the history given by some of the NPCs uh, as they as they play along to uh, the first person they encounter in the past. And then, you know, a couple people on outskirts. Uh, so that that's all fine and well, uh, you know, to kind of give them give them that kind of basic background of, of what to do, where to go. Uh, but yeah, I would. What I plan to do when I run it is spin lock at first hour there in the past, get them in, get them in outskirt, give them a direction to go to where they want to go to, and those last you know three hour, two three hours, two you know two and a half three hours, whatever be the actual adventure, be it, be again, Ritter Mound, Buffy Hills Load, whatever, uh, look on doing it that way. And it, and, and experiences may, may vary on how that works. If you tend to run long, if you're a much more descriptive GM than I am, or you tend to run combat long, stuff like that, you may skip that first part and just say, Hey, we're here. You know, we're doing this thing. Uh, that is entirely up to you. I would play test the heck out of this while you can. We still got several months before Gen Con. Uh, you know, play with it with your friends. Play with it. You feel feel free to use our Discord channel. If you need to know where our Discord channel is, let me know. Uh, I'll probably post it. I'll put post it in the, in here on the uh, YouTube channel as well. 
uh, on the video, um, where, you know, where you can find our Discord channel. Uh, invite people in the Lurking Furious group to come play test it with you. Uh, I'm sure you'll find people that will be willing to do it um, and, and play it. You know, play a couple different versions of it. You know, uh, Ritter Mound, Bathiel's Load, what have you. Uh, I've run... I've, I've played Ritter Mound with Jonathan, who should be here any minute, but I think he's going <laughs> to not going to be able to make it with us. He, he just got a, he messaged me a little while ago that he was just getting out of one meeting and heading home. So I don't know if he'll make it with us tonight or not. Uh, he's trying, <laughs> but I've, I've played with him. Uh, super fun. So, and it's, it's just like a real quick, what four room adventure, <laughs> basically, you know, some, some hallways, you know, um, uh, and and really, if you look like five rooms, if you count the guard room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it, you look at it and go, man, that can't be longer than you know an hour or two. Mm, you can you can spend some time in there and have them dope out some stuff. It could it it definitely it we ran through it in close to three hours, I think, Ritter Mount. And also be very very careful because they have this mechanic in the game. Yeah. Where, you know, basically you get to a new room and you roll to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, I think they changed it to seven and above now. Nothing happens. Got it. But the first few things gives you six different things that can happen. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just annoying. Mm -hmm. Some of them are absolutely deadly. Oh, like the ceiling caves in or something like that? Yeah. Well, ceiling caves in or in Ritter Mount, you meet the big bad evil guy. Yeah. He just comes up, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Ritter Mount. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, which happened to my party twice before they oh did the cave. Uh, <laughs> all die rolls were visible. <laughs> <laughs> And, and again, this is where where like player, you know, GM choice kind of comes into effect on that. Can you use the table if if the if you're having some player paralysis and they're not sure what to do? You know, they they come into the main big chamber and they're like, oh, what do we do? You know, rolling table makes something fun come up. You know, or you you know get get descriptive of of some sounds or something like that. Do you have to use table? No. <laughs> but, but you know, but it's fun. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just just be prepared. <laughs> just be, be prepared to for stuff like that to happen, you know. Or you can just pick something from there. Yeah. Oh, this, you know, this sounds cool. You know, don't don't feel like you're a slave to this scenario. Uh, just because we're running this for free league, and it is, for want of a better word, a demonstration of their game. Um, uh, be sure to allow to have your 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 freedom uh, of run, how you run the game. The whole point of this was, was doing this for them is to show the players how fun this game is. So, maximum fun is the is the uh, word of the day uh, for that kind of a deal. Deal. Um, if it sounds fun, do it. Don't again. Don't be don't be a slave to the script and go. Well, it's in the module. You know, D six players die. Maybe that's fun. Who knows? But, but you know, <laughs> I'll but, write uh, that. I'll put it on drive through. <laughs> <laughs> What's the adventure? D six players die. D six not players PCs. Die. Players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not characters die. <laughs> again, feeling like Twilight two thousand again. But um, but yeah, um, you know, we we, you know, we we're gonna go and run this game a lot. We're going to be running a lot of other free league games there as well. Blade Runner, Alien, Basin, Vasen. I'm not sure exactly how you say it. Some people say it Vasen. Some say Vasen. Um, uh, both of them say that that's the way to say it. <laughs> um, I'm going by the American TV show of the same name. Oh, there's the American TV show? Based on European mythology, yes. Oh, really? What did they say? How did they say it? Vasen. Vasen? Okay. Fair enough. Except for uh, the ones that call it Vasen. In the show. <laughs> see, see, there you go. There you go. Um, but yeah, we're all going to be there running games, having a lot of fun, doing all that good stuff. Um, you know, so it, it, again, having fun is the, the key part of it. Um, 
I would suggest that you guys, you know, uh, print out your characters again before you before, have as part of your prep. Print out your characters before you guys have the game. Uh, if there's anything that we are going to provide for you, I will let you know well in advance uh, before before Gen Con to know, yes, we're going to have that stuff. Are we going to have GM screens? Yes, we're going to have GM screens. Will you have a map? Most likely, yes, we will have the map, uh, uh, the, the the big play map you know, the, uh, of the town and the outskirts and stuff like that. Um, should you bring, uh, uh, you know, like a, a battle um, map, a battle map. Thank you. I couldn't get that out. Yes. You should bring a battle map. Um, I think some of us are doing different things. So I'm going to make some stuff out of like, uh, not the, uh, not the UDT, not the universal dungeon train, but the tiles, like how you used to, how you used to make the tiles. I'm just going to, I'm going to slap them out based on whatever game I've already got. I'm going to cut them to the geomorphs of the room and go, here's the hall. Here's the room, you know, and just lay them out as they get to them. Uh, kind of, kind of, kind of stuff like that. Um, cause though, those are fun as, as well to do, to just kind of slap them out and go, okay, here's where everything is. Um, so that kind of stuff will be up to you. You know, bring. Do you want to? Do you want to play with minis without minis? I would recommend playing with minis. But if you are more of a theater of the mind kind of person, do what you want. As long as as long as it's fun. You know, just be, be prepared to be able to tell everyone exactly where they are. <laughs> you know. Uh oh, we have a Jonathan sighting. <laughs> hey brother <laughs> hey so, so sorry about that i uh, so sorry about that no you're fine man i was just telling everybody whatever you know super busy guy you are <laughs> uh so yeah so that whole thing about being vp of a uh, nerd nerd Louisville will kind of do that to you uh, yeah. but no we've been we've been talking about the game and the, and the and the basics of not even really the rules of the game or anything like that yet we'll leave that for another uh another session Yes, of Dragon Bane. Um, mostly because I have not really read the final version of it yet. Uh, just kind of skimmed it. I do see a lot of really cool changes in it. I yeah. like specifically how they got, uh, I was telling James earlier, how they got rid of motiva motivations to put in weaknesses. They did that like in version three. Yep. Um, I dig that because it makes them flawed heroes. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. But basically what I've been telling the, the people here is um, uh, what what to expect uh, as far as setup for the con, how we, how we how we plan to approach the con. So all that stuff I just talked about, you'll be able to watch on the other video. I'm not going to yeah. go through all that again. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, basically, expect, expectations as far as setting up and getting ready for the game at the con. And just as a, a, a heads up for, for GMs, since we just talked about miniatures, they do give you standees that you can yes. have printed. In the box set, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, they match I, what you're you're running. Might as well use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been I've been printing off the chain, just like this one's attachable. But I've been printing nonstop. You're a fool. Just, well, I, I want to really bring the game alive. You know, I know the standees are cool and everything like that, but you know me you've been you've you've seen my stuff i love having the little miniatures and people are like able to move them and i just like having it mm -hmm. sounds like mazes and monsters to me but okay Janet. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've I, so i've probably run dragon bane now probably seven times and uh three you know most of it's been ritter mound the very first like quick start adventure I mm -hmm. love it. It's a very simple, very easy plug-in. Um, I've run both load. I've run the Temple of the Purple Flame. Um, I'm about to run um, the Tower of Sai. Um, you know, and I just... The whole package is just fantastic. It's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, and I want to stress to you guys, too... Um, you know how, the different backgrounds we come from. Like James and I are old ass grognards. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you know, we we were there when the dark speech was writ. You know, <laughs> back in the seventies. <laughs> so, we headed Aslan before Aslan became a, a race <laughs> in, in 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 traveler. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you know, and Jonathan is a relatively newer GM. I mean, you kind of jumped in with the five E thing, didn't you? 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's all I've run is 5e until Dragon Bane came out. Until Dragon Bane came out, that's all I ran was 5e. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, when, you know, last year I started playing Pathfinder. So I've been playing D&D 5e for 10 years, give or take. Eight or eight, eight or nine, ten years. And just it was 2021 when I started playing Pathfinder first edition. Love it. Love it. It's it's you know, I can see where it is the same as third and 3.5. And I've played, you know, D D three, three and point five. I played a little bit of four. Um I've thankfully, uh, with Matt's help, I've played uh Star Trek which uh, Star Trek Adventures was awesome and fun. I loved it. Um, Definitely has a different feel. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to be playing in his Call of Cthulhu game here soon. Um, mm. A friend of ours, Andy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I played in a couple of his DCC games. I really love the aspect behind that. Um, and, you know, now I've had my hands on Dragon Bane. I've been running it. I'm telling you, I am with as simple as the system is there. And that's, that's, I think that's what free league is trying to do. They're trying to keep it simple. They're trying to keep it easy and let it flow. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense. It just makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. We got, we were touching earlier about action economy, uh, ah. you know, how, how that really plays in, uh, you know, based on what you can do, especially in combat. It's like, you know, cause again, we were talking about how the monsters don't roll to hit. You roll to get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. monsters, so monsters and creatures auto hit, but NPCs like goblins, orcs, they still have to roll. Skeletons. Yeah. Skeletons, yes. They yeah. still have to roll. Anything we would consider like, like in a D&D, &D, like a half hit die or one hit die creature, those still roll to hit. Your big bads, they, they, they always hit. Yes. <laughs> Unless your character can evade or dodge or parry or something like that, which yeah. robs them of their action for that round. Correct. You know, yeah, so they have to choose on what to do. Uh, but again, we're, I want to get a whole lot into the rules about that. We'll, we'll talk about more rules and stuff like that in other times. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, basically, I just wanted to kind of set the groundwork uh, for, for you know, what we're going to be doing at the con. And okay. uh, I'm going to I'm basically just going to use this as a sum up of what we discussed uh, and kind of catch Jonathan up on what we've been talking about uh, for, for next time. Uh, again, we're going to be running these games in the free league room. Uh, this game, this room will be we think it's going to be uh in the main hall right across from the exhibit hall so that's going to be really handy uh, okay. there's going to, there's going to be nine tables set aside for us and we have every one of them completely full for the for the con uh that's on top of like the normal lurking fears games that we run in a completely different room okay. i have no idea where that's going to be in another place um so I have, you know, again, scheduled everybody to be able to run their free league room, free league games in the free league room and they're looking for your games and looking for your room and try to try to make them, you know, each day a, a, their own day. So you're not having to run back and forth. Um, uh, there is going to be a second uh, point of sale in that game room. They're going to be selling material in the exhibit hall and in that room where we're going to be playing the, the free league room. So when you get done running the adventure and go, you can try out the rest of them over there, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, they'll be able to take care of them and stuff like that. Uh, so that is really cool. I like the ability to have that. That way they can they can get it right there in the room after they've tried it. They don't have to try to find them in the exhibit hall, get lost and disinterested or what have yeah. you. That's yeah. going to be very, very, very handy. Um it's going to be such a fun ride. It really, really is. Uh, we had talked about, um, I don't plan on everybody, even though the games are all scheduled titled Ritter Mound, mm -hmm. I don't expect everybody to run Ritter Mound. <laughs> okay, I'm scheduled I, I'm scheduled for nine, right? Yeah, you're scheduled for nine. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm not and running it, Ritter Mound every single time. It's, it, oh, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing. Uh, well, how I had discussed it with uh, with James and this is how and, in, and I, again, I may change gears. This is all part of the discussion. OK. Uh, but what I want to do, like when I run it, is have like that first adventure in the past where they meet the person, you know, he gives them the item and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They go in the outskirt and meet 
and get a get a direction on where to go. I want to do all that like in the first hour. Just keep keep things going. Boom, 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 boom. If they, you know, if if we're running through, I may not even do the the do the little fight in there. You know, if if they're taking too long with the person, you know, uh, it all it all depends. Um, but I definitely want to get them in outskirts, give them a direction about where to go, have prepared one or two places for them to go and have your NPCs steer them toward it. You know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, if you want to go get this item, it's over in Ritter Mound. If you're looking for treasure, they're over in Bothiel's Low, they're bringing back all kinds of stuff, you know, and be, be prepared to be able to run. A cup don't don't have every adventure in your mind ready to ready to drop on them, you know, and and steer them towards you know those couple adventures that you have in mind to go. Mm-hmm. Like you know the whole map is going to be laid out there, and they're going to be amazed with all the opportunities that they have. But have like you know just a couple of them highlighted, you know maybe the closest ones or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then play that out. Really, just play like one adventure you know, one, one of those chapters mm-hmm. and then, and then, you know, sum it up by saying, this is just part of this little world. You know, you can get, you can get all this other stuff and be able to play all, all these other places or make up your own, you know? Um, so yeah, every, every table that we have is going to be different. You know, uh, some of us are going to be running Ritter Mound. Some of us will be running Bethel's Load. Some of us will be Temple of the Flame. Some of us players may be crazy and do complete, something completely off cuff. I don't know. Yeah, you know, but as long as everybody's running by the, <laughs> uh, yeah, as long as somebody, you know, they, they may never get out of outskirt. Who knows? You know, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> they, they may get, they may get a little rowdy and get tossed in jail. And then we got to have a whole breakout adventure, you know, right. <laughs> you know, you, uh, so, you know, you never know how that's going to, going to play out. Uh, and that's going to be fun of it. I think as long as everyone's running again, the final version of the book mm-hmm. books rules, which we'll be going over in our, in our other discussions and stuff like that. Uh, we're all going to be fine. You know, every, you know the, the, the main crux of this is making sure to be able to show the players what a fun game this is, how much fun they're going to have, much playing it, and and being able to get it and play it with their friends. Uh, I really, really dig this. I think it's a really good old school feel uh, to to this game. It's it's not as gritty and grimy, I think, as like. Um, my good friend Eric Bloat's game, uh, Black as the Death or Shadow Dark, the new one that just came out. Uh, I'm that's like, you. that's like, you know, goat porn, death metal. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, I thought that was Viking Indian. Death Squad. And well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. <laughs> that too. You know, de- death metal, you know, kind of board kind of stuff. Uh, uh, you know, really grim, 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 dark stuff, but it is, it is a, a heavy game. Uh, yeah. you know, the character um, James was telling me he ran it, uh, you know, Ritter Mount TPK first time, boom, everybody, everybody dies. I haven't, uh. got, I haven't even got the chance to have somebody roll death saves yet. <laughs> okay, I had two things in my favor the dice were against the players in the sense oh. that they kept running into the big bad evil guy around every corner. Okay, you know, the random table. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh no, I know the, I know the <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, and all the die rolls were visible, so you know it just was. Hi, the world hates you. (laughs) And my four players, and I don't know if you're going to see this, Brian, Dan, Jeremy, and Jared. But God, you guys are dumb. (laughs) And I love each and every one of you. You are great for finding out the flaws in a system for noobs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the the table itself I've used multiple times, of course. You use it every time they enter a room where they take a stretch. Of course, of course. Of course. But, but my, my dice have been nice to them. Mm. I guess <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not Throw wrong. Throw um, away. I did have, uh, they did end up fighting, um, you know, the white, the dragon, you know, the, the past dead dragon knight twice. One of my groups did. Um, but that's because they decided to defeat it and then take a short rest, you know, a, a stretch. That's the one I played in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was that was hard. That was hard. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, yeah, we're like, he's back? No. no and I purposely a... say it at the start of every session. Like, so far, nobody's had to roll death saves. Trying to implement it into the world. You know, speak it into existence. <laughs> trying to make it happen. Look at you. You're too nice to him, Gene. <laughs> I don't want to say. You're just too nice to him. You're just too nice to him. Some, you, know, you know what? You, you got the screen. You just... Oh, oh. I, I, now, honestly, on my first game, it was like <laughs> my, <laughs> the first player that went down goes, "Am I dead?" I said, y- "I don't know." <laughs> I had to look it up. Oh no, you got to save. Well, you're on your way to dead. <laughs> yeah. are nice. You, are you the kind that likes to have the players roll the death saves, or are you like me and I roll the death saves for them? Oh, I make them roll it. Okay. There is nothing like the agony on their face when they screw themselves. Oh no. I like to roll it so that way they don't know what's going on with their character. It's either like and I like to give them a descriptive like ooh like you just feel like you're starting to fade away. You know, it just feels like life is leaving you. <laughs> that woman's starting to smell like cheese. Now, <laughs> see, I, look, I, I, I look at their save and I go, "Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah, the room's a little bit colder. It's yeah. sort of like you're bleeding out. <laughs> getting, getting a little dizzy. Yeah. What, what, what was it? The, the nice in you. I'm just going to twist it a little bit. <laughs> what was it? The rover said that my batteries are dying and it's getting dark. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> it gets dark. I like that. I like that. Thank um, you for reminding me. I will use that. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you know, just, just stressing to the people who are watching or will be watching it, you know, that, that again, this game is hardcore, it, 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 you know, uh, it, it looks fun, you know, it, it, it is, it's incredibly fun. Uh, it is, it is a challenging, uh, game for new, for new players. Everybody's going to be new players coming into it. Um, so, um, there, there'll be plenty for them to do, uh, uh, I plan on, I think I've scheduled everybody to run with six players. There's only five pregents. And I would highly stress to to use the pregents, allow them to pick from the pregents. They're there. So they're already I, set up. Th- this is what I'm going to suggest, and I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah. There's six kin, which mm-hmm. is the word for races, species, mm-hmm. whatever floats your boat. So six kin. The only one they didn't use in the pregens was dwarf. Correct. That's true. More than likely, you're going to have six players at a table. Mm-hmm. Make a dwarf. Bring it with you. Multiple yeah. copies if you're, I don't know, running nine games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, so I've I've actually created. I actually have about thirteen that I've created because I want to give people the sense of options. You know, if if someone wants to play an artisan. Let them play an artisan. If they want to play yeah. a scholar, sure. Make my job easier. Um, the, what I also am digging, too, <laughs> like in the final version, they threw a bard in there. Yeah. I'm like, holy crap, there's a bard. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, oh, I mean, man, it ruined the game. I'm not playing. <laughs> we're done. We're done. <laughs> I mean, after watching a movie, I'm like, oh, of course, now we got to have a bard in there. So, yeah, why not have a dwarf bard? So, uh, yeah, and, and, and I, Matt, I'm going to forget you ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, these that I've made, I just need to get onto my laptop and, sh- and share them with you. You're welcome to share them out to other GMs and everything like that because okay. – um, you know, I'll have plenty for myself that I can give out to my players at the tables and everything. He's like that. got thirteen pregens. Please make that available to everybody, Matthew, because I am lazy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'll and I'll throw together my dwarf bar. Yeah, yeah the creation is and so you can easy. just leave that right on your computer. There is no reason to share that with the world. <laughs> <laughs> could just be a storyteller you know he doesn't have to play an instrument yeah he you can be the dwarf bard as the gm and what <laughs> happened to them as they bled out in the dungeon we could just <laughs> the song as they're dying yes <laughs> and who knew a death knight knew how to play a banjo <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> you, you start to round that corner in the crypt and fortunate son starts playing Donna, Donna. 
I like it. You know, I actually like to bring like uh, pencils to my sessions, and if somebody happens to take like a, because there are severe injuries in this game. If somebody mm. happens to break an ankle or something like that, I like to, as I'm describing the scene, snap it in half. <laughs> give it, it just gives it that much more of a, a feel, you know? It's like, mm. ah. great, great, nice. I should have done that today in a Twilight 2000 game. I did. <laughs> Shot somebody in the ribs. It was bad. Oh. It was bad. Oh. It was bad. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to say this from an economical point of view. <laughs> okay. If you get those wooden bamboo skewers, you might get the same crack. <laughs> get a couple Pick up together. a pack, try it. Get you get more for the crack. bag. I do get quite a bit from uh, the Chinese restaurant I order from. So Yeah. Or even just like the big sack or, or, of or get a big box of disposable <laughs> of disposable chopsticks off of Amazon. Right. <laughs> What's that for? Oh, don't worry about that. Don't yeah. worry about that. Everybody be at the other tables going, what's Jonathan doing? You don't want to. You, yeah. you don't want to. No. You know what? He's don't over play. there with three of them. <laughs> that was your ribs. <laughs> nah. um, As the Death Knight walks up and sticks his sword into you. Nah, crunch. Crunch. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I'm super looking forward to doing this with you guys. It's our, it's our first big, big time kind of a showing. Uh, with a client like Free League, so I, you know that's why I'm kind of setting up these videos to kind of uh, kind of give the player some guidance. Also, there are some great uh, tutorials uh, on how to play the game on YouTube. Uh, I learn a lot, honestly, from watching these stuff that I didn't didn't read or in the first or second pass in the rule book. Uh, there, you know, there's different things. Uh, like when I'm trying to to learn, when I was trying to learn how to do the one ring. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what there. There is a certain factor, and I'm forgetting even the name of it right now. There's a certain thing that each weapon has, or each item has. It's like a durability. Yes. Kind of, kind of a rating. You can and, knock the weapon out of somebody's hand. You can destroy an item. Like there's a lot that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah, and like you know, based on how the strength of the hit or somebody is pairing with it, it can break. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. You, yeah so that so and and but I was trying. I was like, what is what is this? Why is this here? What does that mean? And it took me a while to chase that down. And yeah, going through uh, some of these tutorials on on YouTube, I'm like, oh, that's it just that's makes what that is. It feels so much more like. Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, where it's more dire, you know, in the combat mm -hmm. where the initiative change every round, like, oh, I'm in love. I'm so yeah, scared. yeah. No, it's 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 D and D in hardcore mode again. You know, none of the characters have night vision, even the elves. You know, so that's great. Everybody has to have torches or yep. some some kind of yep. light. Uh, uh, your inventory, I think, is you can only carry as many items up to your strength rating. I think. Yeah, some items are bulky, so therefore count as more than one. Yeah. Exactly. Like a great sword is not one item. Just like, just <laughs> you know. Now, if it's attached, if it's at the bottom of your sheet, attached to your hip, your on hand item, it doesn't count. Yeah. Which... Who goes around with just one great sword? <laughs> now you're just playing. Well, this I got from the Bandit King. This I got from uh, Bob. You know, I, yeah. One of my guys actually had three uh, spears. <laughs> he took them off the skeletons. Ooh. Why not? Uh, you know, and that's other things Still that we can, we can be talking about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's other things we can be talking about in other chapters, like how, how the players, how we anticipate players to game. Will they hire hirelings to carry all their crap? Mm -hmm. Is that is that possible? <sighs> You know, like old school D and D. You know, like yeah, nobody does that in five E because you don't worry about it, right? Right. You right. Know, in, in this game, you need to worry about it. You know, who, how much are you carrying? Oh, you, you, you know, that's that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Forgive me, Matthew, but I must sell this. What's that? All you GMs out there, <laughs> I want you to Google. The DM wants to kill my donkey. <laughs> That's the best thing you'll ever read. <laughs> it's on Reddit. Just read the first response. The it is internet gold. Yeah. 
The DM yeah, yeah. wants to kill my donkey. It's I'm a long it now. It's, and it's, it's a, a long wordy thing, but oh my god, it's it a long is read. epic. It is. It is epic in its proportions. Yeah. So it's a children's book. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Sure, I'll go with that. <laughs> kind of a pop up, kind of a pop up book. Yeah. But, 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 yeah. Pop up and punch you square in the nuts. But yeah. But, <laughs> but, it is but, wonderful. It is a wonderful. Yeah. You know, talk about how bad choices for for players can go really really quickly, and how they can turn them around. But, yeah. None of these games are going to play the same. You know, we're, we're not going to be able to predict what the players are going to do. All we can do is present the material as is written uh, with a little embellishment for our own and personal flavor. You know, some of us like paprika, some of us like oregano, you know, some of us yeah. like all of it. <laughs> you know? um, uh, so, yeah, that being said, I do want to stop at this. I'm sorry, Jonathan, you kind of jumped in, you know, no under the gun. It's my fault. It's my fault. Yeah. Uh, we're going to we're going to wrap this I'll up with it. <laughs> we'll uh we'll plan another one in a week or two and have like I do want to have like quicker like thirty minute sessions just like and, and concentrated on something like how we're gonna do initiative how we're gonna do combat you know the different okay. forms so, of the combat so figure out what you want to talk about for the next one yeah yeah and and, and send it to us and, if you and want me, Saturday works for me Friday does not okay if you want me to start recording like five, 10 to fifteen minute videos on certain subjects. Let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. You know, I also like how you do the things on uh, TikTok. You know, okay. the little, little ones. If you want to just start throwing. I, I'm just saying he has youth and energy. I'm like young, young. I mean, <laughs> but seriously, like if you want to start sharing those in our GM chat on Facebook, feel free. Okay. You know, the free, the free league chat that we got. Uh, you start throw them in there. You know, it's, it's not, it, it gives them you know, an opportunity to have eyes on that stuff, and then we can do like a bigger talk about it. You know, in our in our sessions, like you know, yeah, thirty minutes. We sessions. can break them down further. Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, I want to wrap it up for now. Thank you guys so much for joining in with me uh, and any new players. This will be, stay on the YouTube channel, uh, Matthew McLeod YouTube channel. Uh, I will throw some extra links to some of the tutorials and stuff that I found. Uh, for you guys to be able to look up, you know, stuff like that on your own. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, let's plan on meeting in another week or so. We'll, we'll talk about that off screen. Okay. And uh, and uh, and uh, we'll be we'll be keeping up with you guys and helping you guys get ready for this amazing game. Thank you guys it, so much. And honestly, yeah. if you haven't played it yet, play it. It's yes. Really, it really is a lot of fun. Super oh, fun. so much. Super fun. Take care, guys.